studio at the Connecticut School of Broadcasting in Charlotte. This is Adrian Brown with As the Buckle Turns. I'm back, everybody. I know it's been a minute, but if you follow me on social media, like I said, I'll let you know there wouldn't be an episode last week. And if you're not following me, if this is your first time listening, please give me a follow. If you're following me on social media, you know I told you that it wouldn't be an up- upload last week at all. But if you aren't following me and this is your first time listening, I please welcome you to follow me on all my social media. You know, everything will be in the description to this podcast, podcast wherever you find it. And speaking of which, you, know, you can find it on Spreaker, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. And the videos for it will also be uploading The audio for this will be uploading to YouTube, so please give a like, subscribe, share everywhere you see. Uh, Give some reviews, uh, feedback, comments. It's always greatly appreciated. I say that all the time. I'm in this to learn, but I'm also doing this for everybody that wants to have a voice or wants to hear something different when it comes to wrestling commentary. So I'd like to, you know, I can really tell I'm enjoying doing this now. Because the times I can't record an episode at all or upload, I really, really want to get back in and make it up to the people who've been loyal listeners and to the people who've been you know, sticking with me since the beginning. Maybe you come in from a share or a recommendation or something like that. Even if you just stumbled upon me, if you've remained, you know, because like I said, the views of views and listens and clicks have been I, I've been watching numbers. They've been they've been ticking up. The downloads across other platforms are kicking up too. That lets me know you're actually keeping it with you so you can listen to it again. So I mean it's like I said, it's always been a humbling thing for me. So I can't wait to get back in here to record something else on a different topic. Because pro wrestling allows me an outlet for some you know, for some things to to relate to other things in life. And wrestling is such an interesting animal lately. And there's just so much to talk about outside of the ring, as opposed to the shows themselves, and as opposed to what's going on inside the rings. And that's why I decided to do this show this way, as opposed to just making it review heavy, as opposed, you know, to, constantly just reviewing pay-per-views and special events and things like that. This allows you to go back and maybe listen to some commentary on a certain topic as opposed to a show that's like months out of date. You know what I mean? And before I get into everything else, you know, the whole wrestling commentary, um, I'll just give you an insight into who, you know, I'll let you in on my life. For a split second here, um, I didn't record last week, uh, last Saturday. Like you know, I normally upload on Saturdays. It's the best time for me to, to come into the studio and record. You know, besides, uh, like I, said, I have several life obligations. I still have obligations with my education. I have obligations with work. You know, huge projects I'm working on. I'm unlimited overtime lately. It seems for this huge project we're working on now at my main job. You know, trying to apply for internships for radio stations and TV stations. And honestly, because I'm such a big pro wrestling fan, I'm really hoping I'm getting on to a local um, independent wrestling organization, maybe just to learn commentary or maybe be a ring announcer or something like that. As I've been told for years, I have a decent sound and voice. Maybe I should use it for something, but I have other ways I could help several companies. I think I'd have a lot to offer as a wrestling fan as long as I have been. But there was no ep- episode uploaded last week because last Saturday was my wife's birthday. So we went to Atlanta. We decided that's what she wanted to do. So we went to Atlanta. We spent the day there. And the main thing she wanted to see was the the Martin Luther King exhibit and district down there. I mean, honestly, if, if you're an American, one of my American listeners, if you've never been to that area at all in Atlanta, Georgia, Take some time at least once in your life to go to that area because you actually get to go inside the church that the man preached at. You get to sit in the pews of the actual church. I mean, it's still there. Of course, it's been restored and everything. There's a gift shop in it and everything like that. 
And it's, it's a very humbling experience, especially as a black man myself to actually just sit in that, sit in that church. And they're actually playing one of his, one of his sermons or something like that over the PA. You can just literally see, see him like mentally in your mind, just standing right there at that podium, standing at that microphone. I mean, it's a traditional, like smaller church. I mean, you got the, you got the seats behind the, um, the podium for the choir and everything. Big, huge stained glass windows and wooden floors and classic wooden pews. And I mean, a, cl- a regular analog clock that's like stopped at like 1030. They probably never replaced the darn thing. And it's just, I mean, it's, it, they, and of course they've updated it with things like, you know, images from his life and things like that. You got like by the the um gift shop, you got the pictures of all the pastors and all the way from the original one all the way to the current one who preaches at the newer version of the church that's across the street from it. And again, it's a very humbling experience. And down the street you got the house where he's born at. Where he spent time at and it's a classic uh, middle class neighborhood for for that time. So classic uh thing about eighteenth century Victorian house. And most of you probably don't know what that is. I studied architecture, but whatever. <laughs> it's a very very nice house. And you know, you get to walk up to you don't get to go inside. Cause I'm pretty sure it's, it's probably some you know the part the outside has probably been restored, but I seriously doubt the inside has been. That that'd have been a pretty neat thing. But the house next to it has been completely turned into a gift shop as well. You get to go inside that house and there's like some history about it. And of course there's the there are just there's just like two different types of museums there as well. And one of them I mean there's even a whole room in one of them dedicated to his wife and they were a very decorated couple. They were just I mean, Martin Luther King Jr. and his wife trust I mean there and then one there, there's another one there, the actual carriage that his coffin was carried in is on display in one spot. And it trust me, it's, it was a very humbling experience. Not just as a black man, but honestly, as an American. And you, you should honestly, if you've never been to it, take a trip. Take a trip there and see it. I mean, maybe I'll link the the description in the description for this. Maybe I'll maybe I'll link to the website for the for the um, center for it here. So get you maybe set yourself up a trip for that or, and whatnot. So on to the topics at hand here for today we all know in life that not everybody's gonna like us but you know I've always said that if you have quote haters over a certain age you probably haven't grown up but that's probably I honestly say that only if you constantly use the word but honestly people quote hating on you Sometimes that's probably just their brand and that's just what they do. They really don't have a, have a specific reason other than they're just stuck in either stuck in their ways or they just feel like screwing with you, trying to get a rise out of you. This is a, this is a couple of weeks late. This is what I was actually going to address last week. Now I'm not going to mention this person by name or anything like that, but this little kid on YouTube, he decided you know, he decided to, he, he just makes, I guess, it, the videos he decides to upload, he, it's just all words. And he doesn't really use his voice or anything, but ironically, in this video where he decides to take a stab at yours, truly, he actually decided to talk. And you can honestly, if you hear him, you can understand why he doesn't use his voice. I mean, you can honestly tell he's probably about a 15 year old kid who probably who probably shouldn't be using his parents' Internet for these videos that he's doing. Like I said, I'm not going to mention the kid by name, but the main thing that got to me, there's one thing he, he's on the, he's on his page. He's talking about how he hates both anti smarks and smarks and things like that. If that's at all possible. I mean, if you're in the wrestling bubble, as I mapped out in episode seven, you're in the bubble, whether you're on one side or the other of that line, I mean, you're never absolutely dead center. You're going to fall in one of those little four quadrants that I laid out for you in some way, shape or form. One of them may be 
not as sparsely populated. It's probably the lower left hand corner. If you remember the one I laid out for you, he tried to go on to these little into this little rant about how one one thing that got to me in the one little video he I responded to. He said that you can't criticize a wrestling company. Well, we say that that you can't criticize if you've never actually done it. But then his retort to that was like, oh, you can't criticize the president. If you've never been president, see how dumb that sounds. That was his response. Well, that kind of set off something in me when he when he, when I read that and I flat out typed on his video. I'm just like, OK, presidents make decisions that have real life consequences. OK, if Donald Trump, our current president, makes something it makes a policy or does something, you know, sending us to war or anything like that, that's going to affect a lot of people in a real life way. Be it the people, be it the soldiers themselves, be it the people that were that were sent, were going to war against their families. OK, that's real life stuff. Never once have I thought that a booking decision that Vince McMahon made is going to affect my life. We can go back to impact. Never once did it, it would a decision that Dixie Carter decide to make in TNA or impact going to affect my life. Never, never something, even in a smaller company like, like uh, reality wrestling, a booking decision Booker T makes over there is not going to affect my, my brother and sister-in-law up in Connecticut there. And they're all the way, you know, Booker T's company is all the way in Texas. Okay. This stuff is not real. Okay. Not once have I ever believed that my life is ruined because Vince McMahon decided to have Baron Corbin beat Finn Balor. My life is going to go on. Okay. But here's the thing. This kid decides to reply to me, you know, ripping off a smart busters gimmick called it F tar Tober. You know, he actually decides to talk in this video and call me out saying, you know, talking about how I upload 30 minute videos once a week and things like that. And basically saying, you know, well, because I don't think that Vince McMahon's decisions are real life. Well, this wrestling is his life. Wrestling is real life to him. How sad does that sound? That's how far we've sunk. Again, this is so serious to so many people that it just, it gets so crazy that even teenagers lose their minds over this stuff that they're uploading YouTube videos about their disdain, about their hate watching of all this stuff and how they hate fans and things like, I mean, how far is this going to go? I mean, talking about me uploading 30 minute podcasts a week. And when the most prominent YouTube guy uploads three times a week over an hour long, and he's putting that guy over. Okay. This guy's uploading three times a week, hour, hour and a half long shows. But you're talking about me uploading 30 minute shows once a week, mainly my my highest one. What reached 45 minutes? Y'all can tell me y'all probably see the timestamps. Now, admittedly, I opened the door here by making a comment, but come on, man, don't put something online for public consumption and not expect some comments from it. But you can tell he's a thin skinned child. I mean, I mean, I still haven't read or listened, listened to it completely, but I welcome dissent. As always within reason. But when you launch off into name calling and things like that, and, you know, you, you don't have a you know, you don't really have a true baseline to compare me to some when you're comparing what I do and you're putting over something somebody else does. But you're but it's OK simply because that person has, I don't know, tens of thousands of subscribers. Keep in mind, too, this kid has 10 times as many subscribers to me than me. But. I'll give him credit for that, but still you could have found, I mean, you put it out there. I made an honest critique about what you said and then you lose it. These thin skinned children, you know, YouTube all day. And and that's the thing. When you give people too much access to something, this is what happens. I mean, parents get control of your kids, internet privileges, please. Haters come in so many different, different ways at you. I mean, even now on Twitter, I'm having, I'm just, Twitter is a cesspool. It really is. 
but it's necessary to constantly promote yourself and get yourself out there. A lot of times, a lot of the traffic for my podcast so far has been driven from me just sharing it on Twitter. Heck, and even probably probably a few of these people that don't like me too much, probably mentioning it as well. And I'm still getting more downloads. See, sometimes these things can backfire on people. They don't understand that. But they constantly want to say they're getting on here stating facts when all they're doing is just stating glorified opinions. And like this one kid who's just constantly blowing up my mentions is just, I mean, claiming he's like this big, gigantic wrestling analyst. He's 19 year old kid. I probably, I mean, I probably forgotten more wrestling than he's watched. I've been watching wrestling almost twice as long as he's been alive almost. But you're going to come at me saying, yo, blood throwing all these quote facts which are nothing but glorified gigantic opinions in my face and I mean they, they constantly want to like I said, I'm not going to give him any credence on here either I'm not going to mention his name or any or his twitter handle any of that stuff I doubt he'll even listen to this I guess haters are necessary for us to, us to survive and thrive because if you're not getting a reaction just like in wrestling what's the point if it's a positive one or a negative one, I mean, hey, if you're listening to some sort of emotion out of somebody, you must be doing something right. Which is the funny, which is the funniest thing, because a lot of times these people on YouTube and whatnot, they'll say the they'll say the same thing about themselves. The fact that they have people that are hating on them. And things like that, and like, well, I must be doing something right. But then when we say the exact same thing about what they do to Roman Reigns, there's like, well, that doesn't mean that, that doesn't mean anything. But what is good for them is not good for him. Again, hypocrisy of a mindset. Every single time. But one thing these haters kind of got me thinking about was they're constantly wanting you to they're constantly want to analyze this. And they're constantly wanting to put it on a pedestal. And they believe that. I don't know. They're so wrapped up in it. It's like I said, like that one kid, like it's life to him and that, you know, they, they're constantly reading all these dirt sheets. They're, you know, they're constantly immersed in Japanese wrestling and, you know, this hard style of hard hitting and they, 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 they really believe it's real, but can you really analyze wrestling? I mean, really, what are the metrics? I mean, is, I mean, how do you quantify wrestling ability? News, rumors, stories. I mean, all this stuff, you want to try and wrap it all up in a ball and try to, you know, try, you know, try and put it, you know, put it all together and attempt to make it sound like it's sound like it's legit. I'm like, I said, I'm just not buying it because, okay, the first thing. I like to I like to tell people wrestling wrestling ability. Okay, I constantly say this: wrestling ability is a is subjective. This is the main thing we go back and forth on a lot. Okay, how do you measure wrestling ability? Is there an actual metric for this? Okay, how do you how do you like I said ability? I mean, like I said, when I say metric, like, you know, water is measured in liters, weights measured in pounds. How do you measure someone's ability? Okay, I can measure my my quality of work. There's a monetary value placed on what I do, per se. Like, say, if I'm at a production based job, if, say, I need to produce a certain amount of units per hour, if I'm producing five per hour as opposed to my my own. Um, co-workers only producing three per hour okay that's a metric so therefore therefore I should probably get paid more than my co-worker okay in a business like like professional wrestling when ev- we know everything is scripted we know everything's predetermined a lot of people try to say that is it possible well well okay you you say you can't put a measurement on it, but a, you know acting is scripted as well. But 
certain actors make more than others. Okay, there's a there's also there is a measurement to quantify that as well. How many people actually want went to see you do your do your do do your movie? Okay, the more money your movie brought in as an actor, that quantifies how good of an actor you may be perceived to be, even though that's scripted. If you want to think about that in the terms of wrestling, this is what we mean by drawing power. Okay. How many people are buying your shirts? How many people are showing up to events you're on? And whether you want to admit it or not, people, whether even if you don't like a certain wrestler, if you paid a ticket to see, paid a ticket to see a show that that wrestler is on, you still paid to see that wrestler. You get what I'm saying? It's like you could despise the way a certain actor acts. But if you still bought a ticket to see that movie, you still paid to see that actor, even though because you know the actors in the movie. It's the same thing with wrestling. So if you're going to quantify acting with how much money the actor brought in in the movie, it's the same thing with wrestling. It's all about money, no matter how much you think is how much you really, really think uh, the WWE shouldn't be following the money. When it comes to this, and it should be more about quote work rate and wrestling ability, which is not the truth. It's not really about acting ability either. In the movies, it's about who wants to come see you in this movie. It's about who wants to come to that arena to see those wrestlers perform. So if I if said wrestler did if said wrestler like the certain certain wrestler every time I looked at my payroll and my and I looked at the numbers for events if every if I saw that the numbers dip every time a certain wrestler was on the card then I could then I could measure your quote wrestling ability that way because all wrestling ability is is drawing power is wanting is people wanting to get in there to see you that's it It has nothing to do with how many flips you do has nothing to do with footwork has nothing to do with, you know, I mean, you know, gaffes on the microphone. It has nothing to do with botches in the ring. None of that stuff. It's all about your your eye test in the end, most of you. Because, like I said, I use the eye test a lot of times when it comes to actual sports. My eyes tell me that that LeBron James is the best basketball player I've ever seen. As far as overall skill, as far as just watching him, I ain't talking about team accomplishments because a lot of people want to go to championships and things and things like that. That's not that's not how I do things. If you're talking about basket as a basketball player, you're talking about what happens on the screen in between those lines, hoop to hoop. From my eye test, what I'm seeing is LeBron James is the best basketball player I've ever seen. From your personal eye test, a lot of people's personal eye tests, I guess you would say, Shawn Michaels is the best in-ring performer they've ever seen. All that's saying is in between the ropes, nobody could touch the guy. In my eye test, Ric Flair is the best overall performer I've ever seen. Top to bottom, head to toe, in and out the ring, mic work, character presentation, catchphrase, all that good stuff. And... Just because what you're seeing a lot of times with your personal eye test as compared to other, but like that's again, that's subjective. That's an opinion. And you're saying, and a lot of people get on and say, well, well, it's clear. It's just an undeniable fact that blank is the best, is the best wrestler in the world or blanks. A wrestler A is better than a wrestler B based on your eye test. And in your opinion, that's all you have to say afterwards. Cause again, you can't quantify that. You can get on here and just, you know, tweet out. This is an undeniable fact all you want to. That's not how this works. Not at all. Bias and opinion. I mean, we all got them. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's fact. And all these you're talking about going to the dirt sheet culture, you know, news, rumors, stories, things like that. It's all the work, folks. There's only what the company wants you to know. Period. They're going to get out there what they want you to know. These rumors and leaks and things like that. They're systematically released a lot of times by the companies. 
and the leaks are strategic based on what the company wants. You know, maybe like, okay, let's just, okay, this guy's super popular. So let's, let's just float it out there that we just might sign this guy just to get these people talking about us and the dirt sheets. And you guys fall for a hook, line and sinker. A lot of times, I mean, how are you going to analyze something that they're, they want you? That's what I'm saying. You always constantly say, we're not going to buy into everything that the company tells us to do, but you buy into all these rumors and leaks every single time. And it gets you talking. All chatter for, t- for a TV show is good chatter. It doesn't matter what it is. But it's not really news. I mean, only time it's probably really news is if it's a real life situation. You know, the death of the recent death of Nikolai Volkov and Burkhouse Brown and, you know, Ryan Lawler. That, that's news. You know, an arrest for a DUI or something like that. That's news. A couple, a wrestling couple getting married, like that couple in NXT, Ford and Ford and Bella. That's news. Divorce or even a non-marriage. That's not going to happen now. Like like Nikki Bella and John Cena. A, a pregnancy. You know, the female wrestler is going to be a or going to be a parent now. That's news. You know, sp- supposedly a wrestler might get get signed or. Or you know this you know we're thinking like let's let's the the, the company isn't just going to be like I'm gonna float out we're gonna float out there just to see how they react to us you know uh, I don't know let's just say let's just say I don't know, Tyler we're gonna put Tyler Breeze in an Intercontinental Title program we're just gonna float it out there just to see what the reaction is gonna be you get that so if you're gonna report that as news. So they're just going to see what the reaction is going to be and they're just going to write the show accordingly or just ignore it after the fact. You do their bidding for them all the time, but you just don't realize it. You can't. I mean, you can't really call call that news. Like I said, this is all you can't analyze this. It's all subject, subjective. And besides, you want to keep analyzing wrestling matches or things like that. I once saw, I think it was the tweet or a tweet or something like that. And it's like the best way to watch a match. And this is probably very good advice. It's like, okay, watch the match, the entire match with this. Well, not the entire, not initially. Okay. Turn the sound off. Right. And says, just watch one wrestler. Say it's a one-on-one match with a rep. Watch one wrestler. Keep the sound off. Second time around. Watch the second wrestler. Watch it a third time. Watch the referee. Then the next time around, turn the sound back on, and then you'll understand the whole thing. Then, may, if you do it that way, that's a critical lie. Then you'll understand what they do. I think the tweet eventually said, Welcome to the Matrix or something like that. I think that may have been a Rip Rogers tweet. And I'll link, I'll link him into the description of this as well. Awesome follow on, follow on Twitter. Just cool dude overall old school OVW guy, big time NWA, mainly just the enhancement talent, but the guy, the guy knows this stuff and listen to him reading his tweets is, is always com- absolutely fun. But when we, but when we get down into it and people want to sit here and like debate about these things, I don't, I don't think that's possible because Here's what you need for a debate to, to keep it fair. I'm not going to go back and forth with you on social media. I mean, a Facebook thread or Twitter thread or or even on a wrestling forum or something like that. I ain't got time for all that because all it is is just two people screaming at each other. You can't tell tone. I mean, you're going to be, quote, talking over each other. Responses aren't going to be in order a lot of times. Eventually, you're not going to be like responding to the correct tweet or anything like that. So if we were to really, really debate all this about, you know, about being analytical so we can get, so we can get, you know, two haters of each other in the same room. If you want, if you really really look at political debates, there's a format to these things. So if we really want to debate this, yeah, I'm going to need you. I'm going to need me. But here's the thing. 
I'm going to need a moderator. What that moderator needs to be majority of the time is supposed to be neutral. Depends on where it's going to be at. So there, there's going to be a specific set of topics agreed upon. And then after that, there's going to be an allotted amount of time for each question on each topic. OK, you follow me so far. Now, who's going to set up all this stuff? And then after that, you after each person responds, then you're going to need rebuttal time after what was said. And then there can't be any talking over each other, even though if one person says something that's blatantly false, if you've got the numbers to back it up. So how is all this going to get set up? So you can sit here and get online and tell me to constantly prove you wrong. So I can't like I, said, I can't prove you wrong in real time it's not you're not going to accept accept it if i'm just going to send you a link to something that proves you wrong see it's going to have to be videoed unedited it's going to have to be raw like i said it's got to be a time limit to all this who in the world's got time to to debate something that's completely scripted though who because they they want this desperately to be real so Imagine if I brought that scenario to you over movies. I brought that scenario to you over a television show. Never once in my life have have I said, like, I'm not a Seinfeld guy. Like I'm Seinfeld is widely considered one of the better TV shows of all time. I just don't get it. But never once has anybody come up to me that loves Seinfeld. It's like, oh, you don't know anything about television. But let me say I don't like a specific wrestler or a specific style. Holy crap, people lose their stuff. I don't get that. They always want confrontation. They always want to analyze. They always want debate. They always want to quote prove want you to prove them wrong and you know and just they'll say something, you know, I win, you lose. I'm like just like, I mean, seriously, just like in wrestling, there are no winners. There are no losers. There are no winners or losers in fandom either. You like what you like. I like what I like. I don't watch what I don't like. I watch what I do like. You should probably do the same. So, for instance, I don't like Grey's Anatomy. You'll never see me tweet or mention anything about Grey's Anatomy. Period. I don't I don't spend all my day talking about how horrible Mick whatever was like I watched I I attempted to watch it for a season and it just wasn't my cup of tea. I never watched it again, but you won't hear me going off about it. You haven't heard me going off about it on social media ever since. That's the exact opposite of what a lot of these fans are doing now. They, they don't like a specific wrestler or specific storylines and they will go off about that instead of talking about the stuff they do like and just think about allowing one character on a television show that you supposedly like to ruin your experience okay my favorite show I mean I think the Big Bang Theory is the best show of all time that's my opinion see what I said there That's my opinion. But I don't like everything about the show. I don't even like every character on the show. I I don't like I think Howard's wife is annoying. So much so I can't even remember her name right now. But you know what I don't do? I don't spend all day talking online about how horrible her character is. Get her off the show and I'm right or I'm spending my time tweeting at CBS, emailing CBS, Right, you know, kill her off the show or something like that. Keep Howard single. No, I ain't got time for all that. How immature and petty does that sound? But because this is a combat based looking show and you want it to be so real and so epic, you want you think you have a say in it. And it's all because you know, Phil sat down and did that little pipe bomb and empowered you all to believe that you're more important than you, than you think you are. And you believe you have a voice now when you when really you truly don't. 
all you have to do is act accordingly and the show will get better. And speaking of Phil, I mean, you, I mean, you guys are busy following the leader of a guy whose life is completely falling apart right now. All you got to do is Google it. See what being a flat out butthole in life gets you. And this is the guy you chose to hit your wagons to. There's a difference being, be, between being a, fl- a rebellious soul and a flat out a-hole. And just a toxic human being and a toxic personality. How much longer before he either turns on his wife or she just flat out leaves him? You don't have the power you think you do. Again, you have the option to turn the television to another station. I don't enjoy a lot of the programs on the on ABC. Therefore, I don't watch the station. I talk about the shows I like. I watch the shows I like. I don't watch the shows I don't like. I talk about the wrestlers I like. Okay. I put over Baron Corbin. I put over the revival. I put over Titus. I put over Naomi, Charlotte, people that I like. I'm not a fan of Kevin Owens, but this podcast isn't 90% bashing the Kevin Owens show. Not a fan of Finn Balor. The show isn't the other 10% of the show isn't spent bashing, bashing him. It's just not. Again, how can you win a wrestling debate? If what you're debating, there are no wins and losses in it. Because in the end, all I'll do is bring up the lowest ratings. And they'll bring up. This is a great roster. ROH, NJPW, CMLL won't do any better. And TNA slash Impact topped out at current WWE's ratings. You know, the Russo, Hogan, Bischoff era when it, and now it, you know, now it barely reaches 300,000 viewers. I think it topped out around that time when Pentagon was champion. Ever since he lost it all scenarios and the ratings have gone down. See, again, see that you want to quantify something. There you go. The belt being on Austin Aries has done nothing but drop ratings. Ta-da. The ratings went up when Pentagon was champion. And around it, and I think they peaked around the time of Slammiversary, even though, even though Austin Aries was still champ, but still. But in the end, the one thing I could probably always, even whether it was a work or shoot or whatever in a promo, one time Phil did say, he's like, he wanted everybody to like what they see. That's exactly how we all should be. There should be something out there for people who just like quote, great wrestling who like the spots and things like that. There's room for that. There should be room out there for, you know, people who like, you know, hardcore wrestling. I know it's a stretch to want to bring back, you know, head, you know, shots to the head with chairs and things like that and crazy spots and, you know, fighting in parking lots and things. I know it's a stretch, but there's a there's a market out there for people who like that stuff. CZW proved that. There needs to be a market for people who like larger than life characters. There need to be stuff like that on the show, too, for people like that. There's room for all of it. You can like your, you know, five star classic matches. That's OK. But you can, but there's nothing wrong with the, the people who just want, you know, some some over the top big stars that make them just pop just for saying just for saying a catchphrase. And my God, I mean, I mean, one of the biggest stars of all time, all he had to do was just flex his biceps and you know, put his ear to the crowd and people would just go nuts. One of the bigger stars after him, all he had to do was just raise his eyebrow. Another guy, all he had, had to do was just, you know, come out drinking beer and flipping some birds and people would go nuts. There's nothing wrong with any of that. One of the guy, one of the better in-ring performers of all time, all he got in there and done was just constantly roll around and do submissions. People love that stuff. But he had no personality. But still, people look, people glossed over that. And it was cool to them because they enjoyed watching him wrestle. There were some great wrestlers who came through, through America who just wore masks and couldn't speak English. But darn it, you couldn't keep your eyes off of them because they got in that ring and they tore it down 
and they left you feeling got your heart rate up and prepared they were usually a bridge to the people who you really truly came to see and if you really truly came to see those people who, who, who were that bridge that's just fine too listen we're all in this together we're all fans our philosophies just differ but you know what a lot of people won't say there's room for all those philosophies together that's what makes wrestling what it is it should be a variety show it's not supposed to just be an athletic spectacle there should be something for everybody it should appeal to the masses it shouldn't just appeal to a niche that's when it was doing its best and the more it just shrinks down to its bare minimum the more people go away the more people just don't want to talk about it anymore even write about it anymore and the people who are making the most money off it now they're literally just hate watching it just because again YouTube sends them that check period because in the end, if you really, really got to the bones of these, a lot of those people, they probably really do enjoy it. But hate watching it makes it such a brand now. They can't stop it because some of them have probably quit their jobs to go to go do this and talk about it full time. And, you know, constantly putting down shows and putting, you know, putting down the top company, we'll say. A lot of people would rather hear that. It's like we talked about in, you know, marketing and advertising class, you know, last night. Matter of fact, you know, because I'm recording this on Saturday. Yeah. And marketing and advertising class, you know, conflict sells. So I guess so does hate watching. Sad, I know. And that's not debatable. That's as the buckle turns this week, everybody. I intend to do a more extended episode, but um, I don't know. Let's just save that for another time because I'll try my best to, well, like I said, the closer I get to graduating here and everything, it's going to get a little bit tighter for me to try and record everything, but keep sending me topics and I'll keep in, engaging with people online and things like that. And maybe maybe random topics will come up, but like I said, we're going to keep this topical. We're not going to keep this review heavy. We're going to make this you know, we're going to make this the stream of consciousness and we're, these topics and things and subjects that have been on my mind and, and you guys mind for a long time. We're going to get it out there. We're going to discuss it. So until next time, this is Adrian. It says the buckle turns. See you next time. <laughs>